My name is Sri Shivananda. I actually run a group called Global Platform and Infrastructure at eBay. And uh, the group there is responsible for all the core technologies that eBay Inc. uses, um, all the way from data centers to the frameworks, tools, and, and platform as a service pieces that the developers use day to day to create experiences that our customers leverage on, on our sites um, every single day. Uh, what I'll cover today is a, a brief introduction of eBay. Let me just see a quick a raise of hands. How many of you know eBay? <laughs> okay, that laughter is great for me. I feel good about working for eBay. How many of you use eBay every day? Or once in a while, every day is too much. That's me. Yeah, that's, that's great, that's great. Um, eBay itself, eBay Inc. is actually a portfolio of companies um, that we acquired over a period of time. And uh, it's got three main business units. Uh, the eBay marketplaces that does a little over $70 billion of gross merchandise volume um, every single year. Uh, the PayPal business unit, uh, which is the core payments operating systems um, on the internet. And then finally, eBay Enterprise, which we renamed recently, but it was called GSI. And GSI was a company we acquired a few years ago to make sure we can actually reach the top of the merchant pyramid. Last year, we did $212 billion of total commerce volume across eBay Inc. And, and that's a little over $6,000 every second on average. Um, now, building infrastructure for that is an awesome job. I was just telling somebody that um, I spring out of bed every morning to get to work because it's an exciting thing to do to build infrastructure for, for a company of this scale and um, this volume. Uh, jumping in a little for, for those who may not be fully familiar with what eBay does, eBay is a company that was founded in September of 1995. It's a global marketplaces platform. And you can find literally anything on eBay, including spinach and sprockets. And not just that, you can actually find baseball cards, yachts get sold on it, jets have been sold on it, cities have been sold on eBay. And then there is a missile base that was sold at one point in time on eBay. So that's, that's, that's how ubiquitous eBay is. But uh, changing gears a little bit, and, and talking about uh, our journey in terms of the infrastructure. So we are about an 18 year old company. We started in 1995 and through the years we've made various acquisitions. We are a very large technology portfolio. But the interesting thing about uh, our infrastructure portfolio is that for a very long time we, we actually just leveraged what was available out there in the market. We didn't do much of our own. We did uh, a lot of work in terms of building agility up the, up the stack in terms of making sure that our user experience is extremely agile in terms of our developers providing that experience externally and even, even our, even our back end and, and so on. But didn't do a whole lot. So the first thing that we did in terms of deep infrastructure down at the data center and today's topic being around data centers was actually uh, the launch of our first data center in 2009. So actually, how long is that? That's, that's about 13, 14 years after we, we went into business, we decided to go build the first data center from the grounds up. It's not that we did not own data centers before that, we did. We, we just bought it from other people who had built it before, they used it for something else. We said, okay, we'll get that and figure out how to use it. And I can tell you that uh, for something that we run at our scale, it's actually not very practical to take something somebody else has built and leverage it for what you want to do. And when we did the financial analysis and, and actually the, the technical benefits that we'll get out of running our own data centers, it came out to be extremely positive. And so we launched on this uh, grand exercise of building a data center from scratch. Um, we had some world-class leaders in the data center space at that time that helped us do that. And we went into what we call Project Topaz. Uh, Project Topaz was launched in 2010. It was a very large scale tier four data center that was bulletproof, rock solid, highly reliable, had all kinds of redundancies that was built into it. And it was an amazing piece of construction, amazing piece of technology that we built. And when we built it, we were extremely proud that we built it. It was the largest construction project that eBay had ever undertaken. And um, Topaz itself, this, this is actually the part of the building where you have the offices. This is not where the white space is, but this is the corner of the building where the offices is. But lots of investment went in. And, and as, as I go through, you'll see that 
it's in the middle of nowhere. This is how it looked when we started. But since then, we've had the Oracle data center, uh, the data center for a couple of the three-letter government organizations and all that kind of stuff land in that space. Um, lot, lots of very traditional kind of um, uh, equipment that you see in the data center. Uh, not a whole lot of innovation. What we did at that point in time is try and just make sure that we did the best we could do at that point in time. This was the first entry into the market, right? We wanted to make sure we built a very solid core for our um, infrastructure for the transaction engine, which powered that many dollars every second. So these are standard chillers that you see here in cooling equipment and, and so on. Uh, a whole lot of work that we did in the electrical space, all neat work, Not, nothing, nothing exciting today, but at that point in time, it was extremely exciting. And then all the generators that we put in place for mo about uh, 48 megawatts of power at that point in time. So uh, the project itself actually cost us $300 million at that point in time, and I think we launched with about eight megawatts. Now, if you do the math, you'll see what the cost per megawatt is. Not very friendly. I mean, it's not very viable. Um, but at that point in time, it was good. It still actually saved us a lot more money than taking somebody else's data center and being in them and putting our applications in them and so on. And I think we, we, did, we did a lot of non-standard work. Um, so a part of me asking the question to the enterprise architecture panel was uh, not to throw one at you. I actually ran architecture at eBay uh, for a long time and, and the, the challenges that you folks have that I see, I see too. And we've been continuing to drive standardization in, in various different places. Um, including what uh, Huggy talked about before, to basically reduce the cognitive overload for our developers so that what they do day to day is habit, that they don't have to think twice. It just becomes easy for them. So we set out at this point in time, after we had constructed this thing, we had a design goal of 1.4 PUE, and we were very proud we achieved 1.4 PUE. In today's world, you look at 1.4 PUE, and most people go like, what are you talking of? That's extremely inefficient, right? But we were very proud we did this. It was an amazing accomplishment. It, it was a place. Now, the interesting thing, the day we finished building this data center, we realized that the vision that we had sent, set three years ago cannot be the vision of the future. <laughs> And it, it's interesting, after every big accomplishment, you realize this was the vision of somebody had in the past. You built to that. And now you go, that's great. It actually will provide every result it was meant to provide, every outcome it was meant to provide, but is that the future? And right around this time, we were actually uh, beginning to work through our turnaround, and we were looking for various ways to get more competitive, build agility for our businesses to make sure that they could actually outcompete where necessary through speed and time to market. So we took all the learnings from this, and then we went into the next journey. So, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna focus only on data centers today, but we had similar things happening on the software side, similar things happening in processes, how we did architecture, and, and all of that kind of stuff. So we, we built this large $300 million data center it, it is still serving us. It's probably going to serve us for many more years to come. Um, and then later I'll talk about the project where we expanded it and the decisions we made in the expansion of that data center. But we took, we took stock um, of the lessons we learned. We were growing at a very high rate. When I joined eBay 13 years ago, we had 20 million live listings. Today we have a 730 million live listings at any given point in time. Those 730 million live listings turn out to be about 2.2 billion things that you can buy on eBay. You have to store that, serve that very efficiently across the globe. And this is just eBay marketplaces. There's this separate business called PayPal on the side, which is actually much larger. Only half the payments that happen on PayPal come from eBay marketplaces. And you have to power all that with this infrastructure. So we were looking for ways to do this in a way where you don't have to go spend hundreds of millions of dollars every single time you need an increment in capacity. So that's where came Project Mercury. Project Mercury was, um, this is in Phoenix, the previous one was in Salt Lake City. <coughs> Project Mercury is that building that you see there on the left-hand side. It had two parts to it. The first part 
was the white space inside the building that, that you could do a lot in. Um, the, the design goal for the Topaz data center that I talked about before, $300 million data center, was about eight kilowatts a rack. And eight kilowatts a rack in today's world for us is actually pathetic. We, we, we can't live with eight kilowatts a rack. So what we did is we actually forced 30 kilowatts into a rack. What did we lose? Lots of space, right? Because we used a lot of the density for electricity in there. The design goal on this one was to get to about 40. What we wanted to pack in every single rack is about 40 kilowatts of capacity. Enough compute that will actually consume that. And to make sure that we don't have to build large, larger and larger real estate uh, components to, to support that. So this is the white space where the racks go. Uh, we built right around this time rack and roll capabilities to make sure that we could um, organize our supply chain in a way that you're not dealing with a single device at a time or a batch of devices or, or one chassis or something like that. A whole rack comes in. You roll it in, you bolt it down, you plug it in, it's up and running, right? So this, this was around the time that we did that. And, and that helped us a lot. It optimized our processes. It took away a lot of the manageability overhead. And by the way, it helped us save a lot of what we call lost gear. Any of you have had lost gear in the data centers? How many data center people? A few? OK. Maybe you guys don't lose gear, but we, we often it ends up in storage somewhere, and, and it doesn't come out. Th so this was the first part of that data center. The second part of this data center was what we did on the roof. On the roof, we decided to put seven modular containers. So we, we took the concept of modularity one step further. You can, you can roll racks in. Yes, that's great. But what if you could drop a container that has 10 racks in it already? or 20 racks in it already in one shot. What that provided us was great flexibility in financial planning, construction planning, and so on. I could now get capacity when I needed capacity and not pre-build the capacity for the next five years. Right? And, and so, the, so what we did is we, we, we actually created the space on, on top of uh, that project to, to make sure that there was enough room for seven containers. The first container that we put in was just 500 kilowatts. The latest one that we've actually put in in the next project is 1.4 megawatt by itself. And these are units that, that when you're growing fast, you don't want to do with, deal with singles, you don't want to deal with racks, you actually want to go buy in bulk. Simple wholesale, right? That's what we did. <laughs>